because I can't see your hot spot. So this is a new formulated color from Wei Chow. Look at the beading. So nice. It's very buttery. See how I can put it on, it won't run, but I can also move it very nicely. I've already prepped it now, so this gives me a lot of time to work with it. And the thing I like about this powder is it won't um, flood all over the place, even though it's still wet. See that? You can easily do a one bead without worrying about the powder flooding. Bring it in from the side. I'm gonna flush my cuticle real quick while I have the chance. I don't want that to dry out. This is the first thing I work on when I do my nails. I haven't done a set live for you guys in like what? Ooh, almost, almost a month, guys. No, I wouldn't say a month. I did a few before I left from San Jose, so a few weeks. That's still a long time. Mm, you can try. Turn your hot spot on. So I'm gonna shape my nail. There you go. So I'm gonna do a nice taper. And I'm bring the sides in a little bit. I'm gonna get coffin, but look how beautiful that, that powder lays. Ellie? Mm -hmm. That's where? You, you like, oh, you like it there? Mm -hmm. Nice. I just want you guys to show you guys the power of shaping with your application. Look at that. So this is a coffin tip-ish. You can definitely use this as coffin or you can use it as taper. See how I just sculpted it out to make it a taper? Nice long taper. Ooh, I don't think it has enough juice. Facebook, go back in. And I'm gonna do the same for these. I did a one beading there just to show you guys, but usually I would love doing two beads just to give myself more time to build structure in the nail. I will start around where the nail line is, where the apex area is. can't really do coffin with this design because I need more space, okay? But it, it will be nice and taper. So I do a nice taper. And you see this is the full tip length, natural tips. And it has a slightly nice curve to it so that it's very easy for you guys to build apex that's naturally there already because the nails right has a nice curve already, okay? So do not worry about that. Just like that. There you go. Yeah, see how I built that shape? Look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. It's so simple too. Be able to work with your powder and just know when is the right time to build it. Now I can go on and build my next beat. I just place it right for it there. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure my cuticle is nice and flush because then it'll be less work for me later. I'll be able, and I'll be able to blend this bead in the rest of my nail. I don't need any more thickness on my, my the base of my nail because I already did that with my first bead. This is just for me to blend it in, make sure it's nice and smooth with it. And because it's slightly curved, you have that natural curve for the apex of that. So you don't have to really worry about doing apex per se. A lot of people come, if you, if you don't, if it's too flat and you feel like you need more apex, then yeah, go ahead, by all means, bring up more, more powder. I like to do it in, in two beads because this is how my technique is. This is what I teach in my classes also so my students can you know, get it down. Um, you don't really have to have crazy, crazy big apex every time you do nails, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> as much as I encourage it, but you know, at the end of the day, 
you just need just enough based on the client's nail bed also some clients have very small nail beds you can't just build a giant apex on everything you know you have to make sure you uh, build it based on their nail bed the size of their nails so i'm turning these taper tips and i'm using utilizing it to sculpt out to make this thicker so that i have a taper look So that when the powder is a little more dry, I have to work it and I may actually sculpt the powder out. Let's see if I can paste it. There you go. I'm using the 14 Allen. I don't know if you bought the 16 and the 14, but the 14 and the 16 are generally the same. And you can see my brush is a really high quality. And remember, this is an old brush. This brush is probably six, seven months old, and I, I, and I, I just recently uh, reconditioned it, and it works just good as new. I like using brushes that are more um, that you've broken in. Sometimes a new brush is great, but a brush that you've broken in that you've gotten used to, oh, it looks this very, very nice. And see the shape that's so crispy and i didn't have to use those long extendo um you know uh taper tips it's just a natural curve tips i like to sculpt and build my shape it actually looks really nice nicer you know say and of course my second bead flush the cuticle area most important get it up there without flooding especially with this wave gel powder you're never going to run the issues where it's going to flood to be honest with you if you get the right ratio and with my monomer which is my monomer is amazing you can make any powder like this majority if the powder is very compatible you get a really good consistency but even if it's a, a an off-brand powder it, the, the the monomer is 100 percent ema and it's um what you might call it it's a medium setting so it's able to give the powder a nice um medium uh not too dry but you know not too too wet this one's a little bit high for me, so I'm gonna brush it out a little bit. And I'm gonna actually drill and file more on this this spot here later on. My studio's a little warm. Of course, my AC is always down in my studio. I don't know why. But I'll be able to hand file down any inconsistency. And I just replicate and redo the same thing over and over. See, I put a little bit too much powder on that other one. That's why I had, had a little bit more of an apex, but I was able to blend it down. But also, I'm going to be able to hand file and drill that a little bit more to match the other ones. But I see this powder from Wave Gel. In the link, I, I already linked where you can buy it. Um, all their powder are now like this. If you use it with my monomer, you'll get the consistency. It, it doesn't marble, and it dries. Most of the time, you guys run the issues with powder like this is that it doesn't dry, right? It's like, oh, it's very pigmented. It's nice, but then it doesn't dry after clear cap. Well, you know me, I don't ever clear cap when I do my sets because I don't need to. It, I just don't take, I don't think that it's necessary to take that, that extra step. But you can tell I have to be careful with when I, I'm pulling powder. I pulled that a little bit too soon. That's why I'm not able to sculpt the sides in, but that's why I'm gonna leave it a little bit. I'm gonna softly sculpt the sides in to make sure I get that nice tapered look, that the desired tapered look that I'm looking for. Later, I'm gonna put some artwork on this, some hearts and some yin yang signs in white and darker green so i'm going to use this base of the nail as just the green it's been so long since i've been able to live for you guys i feel like a, a novice living right now i'm rusty guys even me i get rusty you notice how i don't pull all the powder through it's because i need to leave powder behind if i pull all the powder through i was gonna I'm, i would just make the base of my nail more thick and I'll make the top more thinner. A lot of you guys do that. You guys put the powder on the top V and you guys pull from top to bottom while it's still wet. You can't do that because you'll be dragging the powder through and making it inconsistent. You want a nice transition of powder for you guys like that instead of having this very thin and this very thick. And just nice and smooth. See, now when the powder's more dry, I can actually bring my, my brush through and smooth everything out without worrying about pulling the powder through. What this does is it gets my an even surface so it's nice and smooth, so I have to do a lot of work later with my hand filing or drilling. So I eliminate a lot of my time. I just gotta shape, 
quick hand filing, you do the cuticle work, and then it's nice and smooth already. See already four fingers down. Is there a difference why you place the bead sideways versus straight on? I sometimes place it sideways in case um so I, that that the length of the so the bead doesn't overflow over the side. Like I say, sometimes like this bead, if it's not as round, let's say if it's a smaller nail, I'll place it sideways because I I know that um because uh, I don't want the bead to be too big, fat, and then I just go over the sides. So it eliminates the my a little bit more work for me. Usually on the pinky, I'll place it sideways because I'm using a bigger brush, so my bead's gonna be always gonna be bigger. But the side length of the bead is gonna always gonna be smaller than the flat the fat length, right? Whenever you pick me, because I have a crimp brush, I pick up kind of a squarish, roundish bead. See that? I just reshape this, just like that. Shape. This is shaping, guys. A lot of you guys like I'm having problems with shaping. This is how I shape my nails. My hand file is only going to make my shape a little bit more crispier, but I really depend a lot on my shaping based on my um, my ability to use the, uh, to control the powder. Powder manipulation is so very important. We have to understand when it is time to move the powder, when it's not time to move the powder. Um, too soon, it'll be too wet. Too late, it'll be too dry. So it's very important that you guys understand that once you understand that transition and you get that down to a T, you'll be able to do pretty much anything with powder. You know, place on any time, you know exactly how much time you want to work with it. Um, you increase your efficiency, which also increases your timing. You'll be able to get that set under one hour. The application in 15, 20 minutes, easily. I know, when I say application in 15, 20 minutes, you guys are like, oh, that's crazy, right? It's not. It's not, actually. It's possible. You can do it. See? One hand down, I'm pretty sure I'm only at the 10 minute mark. That's me living. I never use wave acrylic. You should try it. Wave draw acrylic right now is it's getting there. They're really catching up to the market. It's how this bead's gonna be wider if I put it like this. So I'd rather just put it sideways so it eliminates the amount of overflow on the sides. So I don't have to worry about it too much. See? Usually the pinky is what you want to wear into because the pinky is always the smallest finger. I'm gonna let this powder sit and let it dry a little bit more before I start working it. Because I don't want it too wet. If it's too wet, I can't mold it to make the taper shape. It'll take on the, the skinny uh, coffin that the tip is look like, see? Now when I move it, I'll be able to move it down from the middle and I'll be able to bring the sides in as much as I need to make that tapered look. And the powder's not wet, so it's not gonna, you know, drip over the sides. So I'm gonna fold anything, any excess over. See that? Now I'm gonna shape. And yes, you can get those tips that are already tapered and long, but sometimes you can't get them uh, slightly curved like this. It's gonna have a nice curvature that you guys always see. Um, that uh, my tips, the ones I, I just showed you guys, the natural tips on my website, uh, nail.shop.com, they are not curved. Even my students, I show they bring the, the natural tips and I show them the difference. There's like almost a 25% less curviness to it. And it actually makes it very, very nice for students, for you guys to use for like medium sets. If you cut this down to a medium set or a long set, the tips are so nice because it, it doesn't, it barely has any curve and what also gives you the curvature for your apex area. It makes it a lot easier for you to work. See, I'm not even worried about my apex. I'm just doing my two bead applications as smoothly as possible. The apex is there for me already because of the way that the tip curves and it gives me the ability to just bring out that curvature from the natural nails a lot more. So I don't have to worry about building, building, building. I'm just have to worry about making sure my nails are level. And once I know the nails are level, the apex should be automatically there. See? It's all about your application, your real control and leveling. So that's why I, you guys hear me always say, you know, one of the biggest downfall for beginners is that when they first start doing nails, they always get into this mentality where they have to build an apex. I need to build an apex. And they forget about the fundamentals of just doing good application because our natural nails has a natural apex. If we do very even application, given it will bring the apex out more, right? Yes, when you use straight tips, you have to have some kind of technique to build it, but with a tip, like a natural tip, where it's gonna be slightly curved, it's already there. So as long as you do your application nice and smooth, 
you've done almost half the, all the work and before you know it you're already building apex without even noticing it i always say apex is like a bonus it shouldn't be something you you dolt on because a lot of beginners they'll just focus on the apex and they'll forget about the smoothness of the application so you have bulky nails that are and sometimes even nails that are unnecessary like unnecessary apex uh, anything from medium to medium short and shorter you don't need an apex the natural nails will take over that for you you just got to worry about that nice even application and then when you start thinking about apex too much you actually you actually um you know kind of uh hurt yourself because now you you can't you're not worried about your application being smooth you just want to build 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 and before you know it you either have short bulky nails or you have a long nail that just has apex that's improper or just too big for it it takes away from aesthetics yes the apex will make your nails look better but it also can make your nails look bulky also so be careful with that it's a double-edged sword we don't even include apex in like when i don't even mention the word until i show my students how to do this and that and then later on i tell them look at this look at the nail and they're like oh wow it's already there i'm like yes you've been doing it this whole time my technique is you know i've, I've crafted my technique to that extent where I'm included in there, you know? Why is that Wi-Fi? Oh, I'm back. Sorry, guys. My Wi-Fi is down, so I'm using my phone internet, so the quality might not be as good. I might cut in and out, but if you're patient, it'll come back. Thank you. Yes, this is free game for anybody. I, I think this, you know, you're, you should be able to get this free game. And a lot of students, they come to my class because they want to be there while they're doing all this. Because it's different when you're sitting there and learning like this than when you're actually there in class and like you're actually trying to do my technique and have me there to critique you and be like, oh, nope, you're doing it wrong. You're doing this wrong. To be able to take, you know, away, take the brush away from you and, you know, like, hey, no, 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 don't do this. So that's the difference in that. But... All my content always free for you guys here on that Studios page. I just want to appreciate the support always on the platform. And, you know, of course, you guys know I'm rebuilding my Instagram because my older one got hacked. But that's fine because I always come back stronger. I was a little bit sad, but, you know, building it again, you see who really supports you. You know, if they're sharing your content, liking, commenting on your content on your Instagram. And I, I really appreciate all the communal support. Like, everybody just coming out and it took me year to year to build my platform and then boom someone just you know don't like they just hate on it and there it goes it's gone hopefully in the future they'll give it back but i'm not gonna sit around and wait for instagram <laughs> i have to rebuild because there's people that need to see the content and contact me my clients too Do you feel like clipping it? Uh, it's, you, you can clip it. If there's a lot of cuticles, I really think you should clip it. But if there's not that much, I don't really like to clip it because I want to leave it there. Because later on when I do drill through the cuticle area, I kind of use it as my safety zone in case I kind of make a mistake. And then I just like drill into the cuticle and clean out the cuticle. I clean out the cuticle while I do cuticle work anyways, instead of having to clip it and make it nice tender. Because the thing is, a lot of people, they clip the cuticle and they don't realize that later on they're going to go into that cuticle area and drill a lot. If you clip it, you clip it, you know, you don't clip it properly, you might leave it really tender and it's going to be very irritant, irritating for the client. Now that you've clipped the cuticles, they're not going to be drilling into that area where you just clipped and then they might be moving or, or twitching and then you'll end up cutting them. So if there's a lot, yes, I trim it down. If there isn't that much where I know that I'll just be able to go through and clean it out during my cuticle process, I'll leave it. I mean, if it's not, if it's not going to bother me, you know, and you guys see what I mean later when I do cuticle work. Sometimes it's a, I get lucky, like, you know, I, I didn't lift that there, I would have cut her, uh, my client, but because the cuticle was there, it just cleared out the cuticle instead. And it's just how I do it. I mean, like I said, to each is their own. You don't really, you know, it's like, there's no right or wrong way about it. But I do recommend if there's a lot of cuticle where it's, it's covering the nail bed, then yes, you should definitely clip the cuticle. If it's like taking over the nail bed, your the area where we have to bond the acrylic, yeah, cut that down. But if it's just minor that you can push back with your sanding band while you're prepping, it's fine. Leave it there. Later on when you, you do the cuticle work, you're going to clear that out anyways. So why spend the time clipping the cuticle? Why well, you can do that later. Yeah. 
Yes, Edgar, my student, since day one. A lot of guys are, are very day one people, and I, I'll be honest with you. Humble beginnings, you know? No one knew who I was two years ago. Now I'm everywhere. I'm international, even. That's crazy. That's all thanks to you guys. You guys even gave me the name Nail Dad. Isn't that crazy? I didn't come on and do, start doing lives and, hey, I'm a Nail Dad. It actually was given to me by the community, and I used it, you know? So this Nail Dad brand is actually a community brand. Like, it, it was given to me. So I'm done with it. I'm gonna try my damn best to make sure I live up to y'all's expectation, produce good content, good classes, you know, the next generation of nail techs. That's why I'm I'm able to give this free game because you guys have definitely supported the platform enough to help it grow to where it is today where I can reach thousands and millions. Like I said, it you know costs nothing to share, but it also costs I mean, nothing to share this also. So it's a two-way street, you know, you guys share my content, you know, grow the community, and there's free game. And there's always someone out there that may need this, just like you. You know, you may have stumbled upon it because someone shared it into your group or shared it on their FaceTime, your friends with them. And that's how it works. It's like paying it forward. When you're sharing content that you enjoy, like, you, like you're actually benefiting, and you're tagging your friends or you're sharing on your Facebook, you're, you're helping somebody else. And that's kind of like a pay it forward thing. I feel like in nails, we need more of that. Pay it forward-ish. Because let's be honest, we've been so competitive in this industry for so long. So once again, that was Wave Gels. 198, I believe. Very nice minty color. Osaka Castle. You can use my promo code and they have matching gel polish too. And make sure you clean your brush, guys. That's my application phase. I'm gonna clean my brush, feather through, make sure that there's no acrylic stuck in there. And I'm good. I don't have any buildup, so of course I'm gonna just throw this monomer away. Monomer is back in stock for those of you guys who have been waiting. I know, you guys, I know I always get out of stock and stuff because some people just buy it. You guys buy it up. <laughs> I'm gonna zoom out to do my um, shaping face to show you guys how easy it is to shape. Because I already did my shaping with my um, acrylic and there it is. Less than a few seconds and we have a nice crisp taper shape. There it is guys, that's shaping. Those of you guys that wanna know how I shape. I can't wait for the Chicago master class coming up. My first salon ready class is going to be next week. I can't, I'm so excited because this is my new salon ready concept. It's such an amazing concept to be able to prepare techs to be ready to work in salons. I'm a big advocate for getting you guys into salons, not just because I'm a salon owner. I feel like it's needed for you guys to work in a salon at least once in your, your nail career. Um, just so you guys can experience like working on the, as a team, working in a salon environment. And some of you guys maybe have have nail licenses that um, you want to work in a salon, but you you go to salon and you're not ready for it because the salon requires you to be this fast, that fast. So I tailor this salon ready course based on my expectations for my staff. So when I get new staff that comes in, I'm like, okay, this is what I look for, and you know, hopefully the students that take it, they'll be able to take. I'm gonna show them and teach them what is expected of them, so that they can increase their chances of getting a job salon and also keeping their job at the salon. You know. And also, you know, if it's for you, it's for you. But I think you definitely everybody should try at least once in their nail career. Um, it's an amazing experience. And I'm a big advocate for nail techs getting licensed, even if you're not licensed now and you're planning to get licensed later, that's great. Because having a license will give you that level of professionalism and open a lot of doors for you that a lot of nail techs don't understand. That's why I'm, I'm a big advocate for it. I always talk about it. I always, I always preach it because I want you guys to understand the doors that can open for you when you have a nail license, you know? Some people are like, oh, I already have clients, I'm working at home, I don't need a nail license. But later on, when you want the income to increase and you have to you open your own studio or have your own products or whatever, you know? Having the salon, uh, uh, LLC or having you know, the ability to get your name out there, business credit. And honestly, that is how I shape. That gives me a nice taper look. I can always run back through it later on if I wanted to, but I'm checking the length, cuticle to cuticle, everything looks good. 
and I'll be able to do the cuticle work, uh, some hand filing, cuticle work, and then buff and then do the design. This is why you can get these set down in less than an hour, guys. How do you stop the nail from lifting? The nail from lifting is basically your prep, your ability to use your um, cuticle bit and cl uh, clean the cuticle area. I'll show you how to seal the acrylic in later when I use my cuticle bit, okay? Um, that's the main culprit. I'd say 99% of the time nails lifting because you, you're, not, you're not using the, you're not, um, you're not um, sealing in your cuticle area. A lot of times I know it's, it's scary using the cuticle bit. I know, trust me. I've cut clients, I still cut clients to this day, but it's one of those things where we just gotta, you know, <laughs> get out of our system. I'm not telling you to go out there and cut, start cutting clients. But I'm telling you that when it happens, it's a normal thing, it's an accident. And eventually, the more you use it, the better you'll get. So don't stress over that, okay? So I'm just gonna roughly go through, because you know what? The more you sh file, the worse your shape gets. Remember that, guys. You know, you're actually removing acrylic, okay? You can't add this acrylic back on. So if you're gonna sit there and file for days, yes, your acrylic can get removed. Your coffin may be turned into a very thin coffin. Your taper square is probably gonna turn into a coffin and your shape's gonna, gonna get, start getting weird. And before you know it, you can't go back. Cause you can all, well, the one thing about this is you can remove, but you can never add back on. Unfortunately, that's not the case. So be careful when you do hand filing. Uh, when final shaping because you want to just you know quickly go shaping stop take a look at it and then move on again Okay, you don't want to sit there and just go Sit there and, and just shape 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 because actually when you pass a certain amount of time on a nail You're actually making it worse the shape's not gonna ever come back to the way it was before So be careful with that Yeah, this color is beautiful. I really like this color. It's like a nice mint color um, I think it, it really go well with it like summer spring anything really um, bring back summer type of thing vibe and I'm just shaping now and I'm gonna hand file in a second then I'll go do my cuticle work and if I need to do any other adjustments I'll do it later last I'm not gonna sit here and spend hours or 34 minutes doing this so with longer nails it's really nice to just simply hand file and you'll be able to just cover the surface area more so than if you use a drill bit. It gets some of the work done for you beforehand. Ooh. Definitely have to clean up under nails, under the nails for this one. It has a little bit of acrylic underneath, but so. And you won't you won't hit the client's cuticle because the apex is there. You'll be only hand filing the top area. So I want to smooth it out as much as possible so later when I use my drill bit, I don't have to actually do any work. So the smoother your application the less work you got to do, more or less, okay? Yeah, so that is very quick, maybe 30 seconds per nail, 20 seconds, depending how thick your nails is. And you feel when it's very smooth because you feel no resistance. This is hand filing. It's a very, 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 very good technique to have and to utilize. Then I only have to use my drill bit for my cuticle area, which I can't get in with this. Need to clear cap? Nope. That's one of the best things about these powders nowadays. No need to clear cap. See how it's nice and dry? No clear cap needed. Um, clear capping is when you're using like really high pigmented colors. There's not enough acrylic in there to dry it because there's the ratio of acrylic and pigment is, you know, more pigment than acrylic. So of course, there's no way that that small amount of ratio of acrylic can dry all that pigment. That's why it's required to clear cap. And yes, those colors are more vibrant. And yes, you know, they look great, but I'm not gonna go through a whole process of application on the whole nail then go back through and do clear cap. It just takes too long. And that's not my style. So a lot of people do it and that's fine to each his own, but I stick with the companies that have powders like this, like Wave Gel, Chisel. Their, their powders don't need to keep clear cap, so I'm good with that. Let's do my application, do my work, top coat, design, and I'm done. 
I really don't like doing all 10 nails color and then have to go back through and do it clear. First of all, it's, gonna, it's a waste of clear. And sometimes when you do that, if you, if you don't know how to do that well, you might actually make your nails too thick. So this hand took about five minutes, I wanna say. So yeah, 10 minutes of hand filing is ideal. Maybe another five minutes um, with the e-file getting in the cuticle area and a couple minutes to clean up underneath. And you know, you got your set under 45 minutes easily. And you got another 15 minutes for designs and that's an hour set. I always break down my, my timing, what I do, based off, you know, what I do so that I know, you know, you can't, if you can't break down how long it takes you to do a set, you're going to get run into to a lot of, a lot of problems because that's when you, you start reaching over two hours. And let's be honest, anytime we get over two hours on any set, our minds, our capacity starts to get, it starts to get tired. You know, you're like, ah, oh, it's been two hours and you get tired. And actually you get slower. If I ever, anytime you guys see me do a set over an hour and a half, you see I start getting slower because I'm not used to doing sets over an hour. So then that's when I start slowing down, like I run out of gas. So actually it makes it longer and longer and longer. So yeah, I try to be as efficient as possible. And that's one thing I want to teach in my salon ready classes. And I make sure the students are breaking down their, able to break down their sets and increase their speed and focus on what they really need to focus on. Sometimes you may be going slow, but not be based on just everything all itself. It's just maybe one of the steps of the nail that you're actually doing too much of or um, repeating, and it's actually causing you to do more and more work. Crystal placement is actually very easy. A lot of you guys that run into crystal placement problems, there's actually templates you can go on Google and you just Google uh, nail crystal placement, and they have like little templates to show you how to place crystals. The problem is when you guys do um, uh, crystal placement, you have really no idea what you're doing. You're trying to freestyle it. That's why it, it becomes a struggle. But if you actually study these placement and practice it, like, you know, uh, on a piece of paper, print it out and then put some stones on it and prepare for it for every set. You actually, when the time you do the crystal placement, you know exactly where to place it. Or you can even bring out the diagram out. It's actually very simple. Um, a lot of that stuff is now available on YouTube. I can sit here and do crystal placement all I want, but if you guys don't actually do it yourself and have that ability to place those crystals and visualize it yourself, it's not gonna be any more helpful than me, you know, not showing you. So I really recommend you go to Google and just put on crystal placements, uh, rhinestone placements for nails. And there's a bunch of templates that have a little, kind of like in little spots where they show you where to place crystals and what it looks like. And it's very helpful. I mean, I used it when I started doing crystals. And then later on, I just started just freestyling. I kind of go based off of that um, that template, and then you know add a little bit of my own style and technique to it. But it's very crystal placement is very important. And I think the only reason why a lot of people struggle with it because some, we, they, you guys just don't know what to do. You, you get put in a spot where you just try to freestyle. You never really want to freestyle crystal placement, to be honest with you, unless you really know what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, you will place crystals wrong, and you won't have to support stones and all that stuff. And actually, it won't look as uh, um, as prestige. Back in the day, people would just think, "Oh, just throw a bunch of rhinestones in there; it looks good." Eh, I don't know. I'm I'm not. I I don't hate on it. It's great. It's a style. People like it. But I don't believe in throwing everything on there. It's not a buffet. I really like to know what I'm eating. I know we like to know what my my course is. So I really don't like to slap everything on there. Maybe that's me personally, to be honest with you. I feel like a lot of times people just think they throw whatever on there and it's like a buffet of crystals. I'm like, oh, no thanks. So this is where the lift comes from. This is my five and one sharp. I have this in safety also, for those that don't know how to use it. And this will be able to get me into the cuticle area. It's very, it's custom made. So this is when I'll be able to go into the cuticle area and flush it down to eliminate my lift. And you see that extra cuticle I had earlier? Where? See that? I'm just gonna utilize that cuticle as like my my buffer zone for me to just go through it. See? All that cuticle you saw earlier, it just it just gets removed.
And you know how earlier I did this all nice and smooth? So I can just run my drill bit through and it'll be nice and smooth. I don't have to worry about any resistance because I did my, my hand file either already. I'm gonna clean up underneath, any excess underneath. I like doing like a circular motion. That so this bit is designed for drilling circular. It gives my nail structure and I'll be able to clean up underneath any excess that I had earlier. I use a small bit for that one. I have a little bit by the sleeve area there. That's so fine. I'll do that last actually. But as you can see, nice and smooth. Shape still there, nice and crisp. This part is satisfying to watch. Yeah, I know a lot of my students have this bit. A lot of people have this bit and they're like, oh, it's a life changer. It is, you know, when I created this bit, everybody's like, that's weird. Like, you know, it's, it's different from all the other ones on the market. Yes, because I'm not going to create the same one. Uh, this is one tailored to me, how I like to use my bit, the way it's cut. So I really, really like it. And I mean, it's like one of my best selling bits. This comes in the medium. A lot of people use the medium also because I like to break down acrylic faster. That's fine. I stick with the, I sometimes go to the medium also, but I like, I like sticking with a uh, nice fine one. This will be able to give you some nice cuticle work. Look at that cuticle work. That means that, that that's not gonna, that's not gonna go anywhere, guys. Oop. <laughs> that means that my drill is not running fast enough. You guys ever, ever have resistance? It means that your drill is not running fast enough. So it's like, getting caught. Oh, okay, I have a little spot right there. Clean it underneath, like always. There's always acrylic because you pinch off the sides, but look how crisp that is. Guys, that's like to die for. This is from my natural tip. Don't need to do any special long C-curve tips or anything, or long, you know. Look, the C-curve's there. I can I can build and create C curves naturally. And I do like using the long coffins, but sometimes you don't really need to put those on because the uh, only time you ever need to use those long extend uh, XXL uh, coffin straight tips uh, or taper straight tips is if the client actually wants it that length. Do you really want to buy that specifically for the length and then have to put it on and cut it down? It makes no sense, right? Why buy those tips and then cut it down? and you'll be kind of wasting the tip. I use a natural tip here that's very universal. I can do this short, medium, long, XL, full tip length, and it still looks really nice. It has a nice curve to it too. So I'm able to bring this, smooth it in. Because remember, I couldn't get my hand file through here. This is my sharp bit, so this, the edge is very sharp, so I'll be able to get right nice and crisp right into the side walls there in the cuticle area, okay? There you go. And this is where I hand file earlier. Remember, this is the one I had, I told you earlier that was a little bit thick, that I was gonna thin down a little bit. But a nice buff will definitely take care of this later on. And it's very nice and smooth for my hand filing. There you go. I love taper. Time, I think right now it's like 3 p.m. where I'm at. East Coast.
tell you, this drill bit does miracles. I tried switching back to my older drill bits one time when I didn't have this available. Like, I was like, either it, it was in my uh, my backpack and then I was, I was too lazy to get it out because I just got back from class. I'm telling you, it's completely different. I, I can't go back to my old bits. <laughs> Once I use this bit, it's like, a, it's all purpose. I I really use it for everything. After that, I'm like, all right, I mean, like, how am I ever gonna go back to doing anything else? It does everything. And this usually should take you less time because remember earlier we flushed the cuticles nice and even. If you got a lot of cuticle acrylic in the cuticle area, yes, it's gonna take you a little longer, but I generally recommend you make sure you do all everything easy, uh, nice and smooth during the application. This it will make this job a lot faster, so you actually get your set done quicker. Summer quick on these nails. I'm gonna use this uh, small tool later to get it out. No worries. For now, my main focus is getting these nails nice and smooth. So, that, so we're gonna do some acrylic, uh, some designs on it. One hand down, guys. And that's where the lips come from. Because if you don't seal this in within a couple of days, what's gonna happen is gonna grow out. And if it's not sealed in, water is going to get underneath and it's going to start lifting and then it pops off. Okay? That's why all lifts start happening around the cuticle area. Why? It's because of this process. If I flush this down to the cuticle area at the, the nail bed, right before the nail bed, I won't have that issue ever. Yes, minor lifts here and there after two or three weeks, but it's not going to be major ones where it's going to lift and pop off or have the clients have a, a greenie. Because if water gets under there and they can't clean it or they, they can't dry it out, because it's impossible to, to dry out nail water that's underneath the, the nail. So once it, that happens, you know, you're stuck. <laughs> Moisture will be building up. And then all of a sudden I know where you take the nail off and there's a green spot. That's why greens happen. That's why it's important to be able to seal the cuticles in, guys. Such an important technique. And yes, it's, guys, it's scary. Yes, you know, I know, I understand. But you have to do it. As nail techs, we have to do it. We have to take care of our clients' nails. We cannot ignore it. Um, if I didn't do this earlier with my hand filer, I wouldn't be able to go right through and smoothly just go like that. You know, it just eliminates me having to work more. I just want to go through nice and smooth and just get it done. Get rid of the scratch marks. Then I can just nicely buff it. Just like that. Get rid of the excess here on the bottom. Nice. 
don't overthink it too guys you know it's only a few like this the steps i do nails are just the same steps every time i do a set i do the same technique the same steps over and over again because that's literally what it is with nails repetition if you want to be efficient you need to be able to do the same steps over and over again and when you do nails break it down am i doing this 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 because there's sometimes i know a lot of you guys are probably doing it differently every time you do it so make sure you do it the same way because once you do it the same way you get that consistency down you're more efficient and you'll be able to cut down your time by a lot the only thing only time you can ever get faster if you do the same thing over and over again you can't do the different things every time because then you won't be able to get faster your muscle memory will be changing every time nails is generally about muscle memory you're, you're, you're repeating the same process over and over so eventually even if you're not even no, trying you're going to get faster there's no way you're gonna, you get slower like you say if you run a mile every day if you run a mile every day you're going to get faster day by day okay you don't get slower every day yes you're going to get more tired but your body's gonna get stronger and you're gonna get faster, quicker. That's why it's very important to be work, to get as much hands on as possible. A lot of stay at home nail techs and we run into issues where when you just first starting out, you don't have clients. So you may be doing one client, two clients a day or maybe one or two clients a week, you know? You're not gonna get enough hands on to grow. But in a nail salon, you'll be able to get more clients, more repetition, because you're, you're based on walk-ins. You don't have to, people don't have to, you don't have to build from scratch. If the salon's busy, you're gonna get walk-ins every day. And when it's your turn, you can average two to three sets a day. That gives you the repetition over and over again, and you'll be able to grow as a nail tech faster. A lot of my staff, they actually grow really fast in my, my, my salon because of the environment. It's busy, all the other girls are working, working. Everybody's kind of, you know, one up each other. Everybody's, you know, working together. They actually, they have to fall into that energy. A lot of times when you're stuck at home and, you know, you, you're feeling down because you don't have clients and you're all by yourself, it's different. When you're at a salon, you have a team, everybody's together, everybody's working with each other. That's a good feeling, guys. And I would love to everybody to be able to experience that firsthand. So that's my goal, my legacy I'm going to leave behind. I'm going to push for more nail tech to get into salons. Um, licensing and experiencing teamwork and all that stuff. So right now I'm using a small thin bit like this, just just to clean around the uh, any excess I have here around this area. I have a few, so I like to clean up underneath. I'm a big cleanliness type of guy. Surprising, a lot of my students have gotten licensed and work the salons and they, they, they message me. They let me know like, yo, you're right. You know, like, and a lot of them have realized that when I, when I told them being salon ready is different and they realize that it's hard. So they have to go back home, you know, they have to, you know, practice again, get their time back down. And that's when I, that's when I came up with the salon ready course, you know, that's when I was like, you know what? I need to do a course that prepares them for the salon life. Cause not a lot of them don't even know what the salon life is like. So make sure you get that course. I make sure that the students get their timing down um, and know what to they're expected of them when they come in the salon. A lot of times when you don't work a salon, it's a little bit different. You don't you're not ready for it because you don't know what's expected of you. That's not your fault. So yes, the information needs to be put out there. And if a salon owner knows that you understand what's expected of you, of course it'd be easier for you to get a job, right? I'm not saying all salons are the same, but eventually all salons are going to be kind of the same as my salon, to be honest. A lot of the new generation of nail, uh, of nail techs, younger generation, they're owning salons and they just want people that are, are willing to work at the end of the day. So now I'm done with this. I'm going to do one last step is I'm going to bring my sides in, a nice curvature. I do have a slightly curved nail, so I'm going to use a nice sanding band. I'm not going to use anything too deep, uh, too sharp. And I'm gonna just clean this, this side right here. Make sure it's nice and curved. Sometimes it could be a little bit jagged. You don't wanna use a metal bit because you don't wanna eat into this and drill into it, okay? You see how I'm doing it? Gives it a nice, so I don't have any jagged edges to catch it. And this will just roll right onto it. 
Wow, so nice. This is important. This will separate you from the other nail techs, okay? You gotta take these small steps. It takes you a few minutes, but it just gives your nails such a different look. Look at that. Such a different look. Look how clean that is. There's no acrylic stuck on the sidewalls there. Can you clean up any excess? I only do this when I, it comes to um, the curved ones, because of course you run that issue with the curb, slightly curved tip. So clean. Side profile pictures be nice and crisp. See that? Bam. You don't want any cool, like, jagged out there under here. Ooh, I don't understand Spanish, but if someone can translate her question, I might be able to answer. <laughs> then you have to translate my answer. I'm sorry. No, I'm glad Espanol. I should learn Spanish. the bottom nothing feels better than this this part right here and you get that nice crisp transition and it might not be a lot of stuff it might be just like excess acrylic just hanging there it gives it a little bit of a kind of a, a a bump what that does is that it can get caught on the client's clothes and stuff like that so you want to smooth it out so it's not like too jagged you may not need to do this as much as I, I do if you, you know, my application was a little bit slower earlier, but like I said, what's a few minutes compared to the, the finesse of the nail, huh? What's a few minutes, guys? What's a few minutes? This is what separates you from all the other nail techs out there. Cause I know a lot of times you guys probably see your pictures and you guys are like, oh, what the heck is that underneath? Only took you a few minutes and you can be able to clean that underneath. Right? And we're done, guys. We're done with our set. Now we just gotta get a nice buffer and we just buff the top. First, I'm gonna check, um, make sure all the shape is still intact, which is it is, because honestly, we didn't do a lot of drilling, right? Um, thickness also affects uh, shape so if you have really thick nails and you shape all the and you shape it and then you drill all the way down it might change the shape lightly slightly to die for <sighs> see guys easy you can do it too Everybody's probably like, yeah, sure, now done. Shut up and do the design. Show off. Just kidding. Not really. That's probably what you're thinking. I can't really help up and do the design already. Sitting there showing us the side profile. Proper way to do nails. How dare you? How dare you show us all the finer little things that separate us from other nail techs in this industry? The audacity of this guy, right? Here, that's fine. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! See, any finishing touches I want to do, I'll do right now. I'm not gonna do it earlier because I, I don't know what's gonna happen to that shape later on when I drill all the stuff. So, I'm gonna do like a minor shaping and then I come back through. And if I see that I have to fix anything, I'll do it in the finishing touches. Who's uh, 
you guys, I mean, hello. This is from these tips, natural curve tips, okay? Custom, thin here, so it applies on glue easily. Very nice and durable here. If you clip this shorter, it becomes more and more straight. It has that nice curve. Go ahead and wash your hands. That was a fun set, guys. What was the time on that? I didn't get to see. What's the time on that? Is that under an hour? It should be under an hour, right? So I'm doing a little bit of artwork. I'm gonna use some gel polish. Also a white, so I'm using my white gel gel art paint. It'd be easier for me. And I'm probably gonna use. Uh, uh, uh. My art brushes that I'll have here. Where is it? <laughs> and we're gonna do some hearts, like those like multiple hearts outline So I'm gonna use my older generation brush. Usually uh, this is the one that they, they come in now. These are the older generation. I still have them because you know, they're really good to use. Um, I'm gonna clean it real quick. Get some acetone. It's been sitting over for a while, so I'm gonna clean it with acetone. Usually you can clean it with monomer or a little bit of alcohol, it's fine. Let me see the picture. Let's do the yin yang first. All right, art time. So we're gonna do white and we're gonna create the yin yang first on the pointer finger. That's a weird yin yang. You want it just like that, right? Mm -hmm. So we just do this side white. We already have the other color over there. This is the art uh, gel paint. So a nice thin coat will cover up that green. Um, usually if you use gel polish, it might take you a little bit longer, a little bit more product. I like the way they do this yin yang in this picture. I think they did it wrong, to be honest with you. Mm. <laughs> I'm actually not gonna do it like the picture because I think in the picture that, that you showed me, they did it wrong. That's why it, does, that's why it looks like this. Yin yang is not supposed to look like this. <laughs> like 
that. That's more like it. <laughs> you actually gave me a poorly done inspo pick. And you just don't hate on it, but. I look at that, I'm like, I'm not gonna replicate that. That was more like a swirl down the middle. It wasn't a yin yang thing. This is more yin yang. Be careful replicating stuff, guys. Not everything's done right. Maybe it's just their style of doing it. I just didn't like it, so I didn't want to do it. I'm not going to replicate something I didn't like. So maybe it, that's how their client liked it. Never know. You never know. You can't assume. on here Could let do you see you can probably use a flat brush or something to paint in this uh, negative spot space but since there's only one nail I'm not gonna really worry about it if I was doing this for like a bunch of nails and I yeah I'll probably just do the outline and just paint it in with a brush and then just clean up but I'm not too worried about that at this point. Because I don't have to do two nails, so it's not gonna take me too long. The only thing that's gonna take me long is in doing the hearts, the hearts portion. Let me try to sweep this over nice and sharp. Sweep this under nice and sharp. Then I'll be able to put the nice dot here. Ooh, I might actually have to get the, the same color. Matching color for this. I have to do the green dot there, so I'm gonna have to ask, ask my um, receptionist here to grab me this color. There you go. As you can see, this is art gel, so it's not gonna bleed all over the place. It's just gonna stay where I need it to stay. Get wait. You going reception? Your mama? No, I'm here. Get wait. Tìm màu một chín tám vậy mày. One ninety two, yeah, wave. So we'll do it the opposite direction for this one. Take it out. I scooped it down fatter. Yep, I need the other green to put the green dot over there. In hindsight, I could have just removed some of the white there and leave a, a, a spot for the green, but. Let's do it the legit way. I remember, if I, if I was using gel polish, all this would bleed all over the place. That's why I use gel art paint. It just stays a little bit, it's easy for me to work with. It stays, uh, won't bleed. I'll be releasing my liner gel soon. 
Well, 32 colors. I'm excited for that. Có không? Dạ Dạ See that? One nice thin coat, I'll get nice pigment Nice coverage Take a little bit of this green here. This is the matching color for wave gel. They have the matching color, you guys see? Their, their gels have matching colors. Jeff can use a dotting tool for this too. It'd be a lot easier. Eesh. There we go. Okay, unlock your phone. Now for the hard part is the um, the hearts, hearts, guys, hearts, 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 hearts. So I will do green first. Green, white. Okay. too because this is where it shows that you your work shows the slightest detail matters I'm using wave gel gel polish so it's not as, not too thin so it actually works slightly well Is it green, white? Let's see. Yep, green, white, light green. And that's a nice heart. Freehand. Kind of a flash gear that. Yep, you can get these brushes. Um, this is my. Um, uh, my 10 uh, is a is an older generation, but the same brush. Uh, it's my liner brush. One end is about a 10 millimeter is what I'm using right now. And the other end is a 20. So that's double the size for longer lines. I like using this one um, a little bit more when it comes to smaller intricate ones, shorter lines. You don't want to use a long brush when you do a uh, small detail work because it's not, <laughs> that's not going to work because it's going to bend. Um, you want to use as small as possible. Sometimes even a detailer, a nine millimeter, the detailer brush will work great with this too. Am I back? Oh, I'm back. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry guys. The internet's going in and out. But I'm back. Hopefully everybody reconnects. Mm 
This is Zen. It takes time. Gotta build layers on layers on layers on layers. But actually, if you do it right, it looks good. You can tell someone who rushes through this. These are the, the, the designs that you can, that when you the clients ask for, that you know that some people rush through it and some people will take their time. Just the in, intricacy, the evenness of the hearts, the layers and layers, it shows through in the work. For me, I spot it right away. When I see someone that does this design, I see that they either did it right or they, they rushed it. And not to blame them if they rushed it, maybe they're just running late on the client. But definitely when you get a client that wants a design like this, definitely make give yourself some time, okay? You can execute. Execute to the best of your abilities. At the end of the day, it's nail techs, you know? You get a chance to do a design like this, you wanna make sure that it looks badass, right? It looks good. Like when we're done, we're like, hey, I did that. Instead of, damn, I wish I had more time. You know? That's why you can charge more. It takes you longer, more time, more work. The evenness of the second heart outline is very important. Okay, flash here. You thought it was, you know, sometimes my, because my Wi-Fi is down, so it's like in and out, in and out. I'm using my phone internet right now. So it's a little bit glitchy, I'm sorry. So, let's do another one out here. And of course, as these hearts get wider, wider, you get less of the heart. As you see, it gets bigger, so you get less of it as normal. You got you have to utilize the sides. So actually, it it definitely gets easier as we get to the bigger, bigger, bigger hearts, right? Our ones are the middle ones. I didn't like that. It's too too close, too far from it. So generally, you would use a green, the the that nice green we have here. But since we don't need it because we have the color pot already, I'm just gonna outline around it. use the background like I would the green. You guys see that? This, the top one's too big. That's why we cure as we go, right? Cure as we go. If we mess up, just take it off, just like that. So I'm gonna finish this one off. This is the only designer here, right? Yeah. Right? And then I will do the other one really quick off, not on live, because like I said, I'll probably be able to work faster without living. I'll get it done quicker, but I'll show you guys how to do the first one. Of course, the other one's gonna be the exact same. It's that midline. I'm utilizing that as if, as if I, I drew the, the green in. That's why my spacing is very important. Or on the top one, I, I did it too thick. So I'm pouring the top one, I don't do it too thick. I need to have that spacing the same, like that. Like that. Of course, I'll bring it in. Give myself the heart. Bring it out. E. 
easy. See that? I messed up. Take it off. Start again. You're never committed until you actually cure. Okay, guys? A lot of you guys, I see your work. And I'm like, you could have redone this. But you didn't. And you lost a little bit of points on it. I'd hate for you guys to part of that. That's why we flash here in between layers. In case we mess up, we just restart. No shame in that. Nobody's perfect. Ooh, child, ain't nobody, ain't nobody perfect. I guarantee you that. Last care. And we have one more layer of white and we're done. About 10 seconds to flash care, just in case I mess up. Okay. Oop, too far. I'm gonna do this first. And this is all the hearts I'm doing. It's just enough. I'll leave the other space negative. Make sure you stay precise. Use the last line you did as your guideline. Give you that precision. Yeah, see what I mean when you've seen other people do this design and you, you know that they rushed it? They just spent another 10 minutes. They've been amazing. Or you might be even the ones that say, oh, I've done this design. I should have, I wish I would've taken a little bit longer with the designs, right? Look how, look how nice it looks if, if we just did it like the way we wanted to do it, you know? In a perfect world, we had all the time in the world. Look how nice it looks. It's so uniform, it really pops out. It shows that you've taken your time, your artistry. I feel like these designs, are not, they really test your ability to be, to be patient. Um, because, you know what, from, from the looks of it, it's very simple, right? Like, oh, that's, that's, sim that's simple. It's just a bunch of lines that makes hearts. I could do that. Then, when, you know, you can probably do the first couple ones, and you're like, and later you kind of get frustrated because it's probably coming out looking like uh, deformed or weirdly shaped, and you're like, why, what's going on? And you get frustrated, and next thing you know, your hearts are, like, lopsided, and, and the layers aren't the same, that consistent, and you're like, ugh. You know how I know that? Because the first time I did this design, I was... I was exactly the same way I was describing other people right now. I hated it. They look ugly to me. Look at me now. Look at me now. <laughs> I got paint on her. And there you guys go. I'm going to top coat this. You want shiny or matted? Shiny. Shiny it is. I'll use my top coat. Shiny top coat is a very nice top coat. You like the color? Hey, sorry, how are you? This is Taco, it's money back and guaranteed. It's in, it's probably one of my best Taco. It's able to get a nice thin layer without losing your shape at the tip of your nail. One of the biggest issues is that you use a Taco that's very thin, it actually, or droop to the corners and it'll make you lose your shape. This one I've had actually made it very, very medium. That doesn't do that. Oh, look at that. Shit, it's almost like St. Patty's Day. You see the light flickered? Just a little bit of green on here. Easy fix. That's probably from the art brush. 
It's gonna fluff it off there. Move this top coat and reapply. You only need a thin coat of this and it'll be able to be nice and shiny. I'll show you guys the shine work. Um, UV LED, of course. Steam resistant, even for your smoker clients. Make sure everything is good. Oh, actually this one I'm gonna matte first. Apologies. I'm gonna matte this first, then I'm gonna top coat it just to seal everything in because this, this, this has bumpy surfaces. Cause I, it's half and half. It's good anytime you guys use polish that has bumpy surfaces or something like that, or like, um uneven you can matte it first to smooth down everything then you just top coat it the matte will actually seal in the the excess okay and like i said i'll do one hand i'll show you guys the final product and then i'll do the hearts on the other hand and be on my way okay that matte should have sealed sealed everything in now I'll top coat we'll give a final cure okay go ahead so the matte what it does is it levels out because you know how I did half green because there's no really no base coat and then just paint it so it's gonna but chew it up. When I do the matte, it's gonna actually smooth out that bump and then I'll be able to top coat and it won't have that uneven surface. Um, sometimes if you polish too thick, that could be also an, a neat little trick you could do there also. And let me get some cuticle oil. If I had any on my table, which I should. There it is. And there are all my other brushes too. Jesus. Can I take it out? And there we have it, guys. The other hand will be just like this. I just gotta finish off this hearts here. That's pretty, isn't it? Cute little cuticle oil. And if you're a beginner and you haven't done cuticle work a lot, I don't recommend putting too much cuticle oil on. If you do put cuticle oil on, make sure that you remove it. Because if you haven't seal in your cuticle area and you put cuticle oil on like this, it's gonna seep into all those uneven edges that are underneath and it's gonna actually make the nails lift. So be careful with that. So a final look. The other hand is gonna be just like this. I'm using my natural taper tips. Look at that. Chris Bay, Chris Bay, right? There you guys go. Thank you guys for joining me. I'll finish up the set, see it? Nice tapered look.